funny situation, like the bingo song, or um, <laughs> just those are things that are that are hysterical to me, and I think those are really, really charming. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if Dragon Ball Super might be more Dragon Ball like than Dragon Ball Z like, you know, because Dragon Ball is so comedy driven and, and story driven. And I still have a hard time believing that eventually it won't get to a point where there's people, everybody's for a really long time. time. Yeah, Goku starts out as a radish farmer, I think. It's, and by the way, this is just information that's on the web. We don't have materials, we haven't started recording, so I don't want to construe that. So this is just stuff that I've seen on the web from various fans posting <laughs> on my page and stuff. Um, I was talking to my producer Justin. I thought, you know, I had a different idea about what, how I wanted Dragon Ball Super, or Dragon Ball Z to go, just from my own experience of the character. My original idea was that Goku would be like old, and everybody has to seek him out, like he's the new Master Roshi kind of. But then, <laughs> then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if Goku's character doesn't really like Vegeta goes through an incredible growth arc, you know, and Piccolo does as well, and a lot of the characters grow and change, and that's the whole, what makes the story interesting. Goku doesn't do a lot of growing and changing personally or emotionally. He's just like, I'm Goku, and I'm the same. And guess what? I'm stronger than I'm the same. You know, he doesn't really grow or change. So I thought it'd be interesting since Goku got bonked on the head and lost all his Saiyan evilness, that if through magic or through some other means they restore it and Goku becomes like yeah. hardcore, hard, more hardcore Vegeta. Like and he trips and falls yeah. and becomes even, like, becomes super mean. He becomes like Vegeta that. and then he has to learn to be good and then Vegeta's like, what? Why? Wait, I'm the bad man. Yeah. You know, that would be an interesting, like, like bad Superman was. Goku or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like something that would be a really interesting story. I don't know if they'll do that. And this, is, by the way, is my own personal speculation. I have actually had that same exact thought. Like, what if there was an evil form of Goku? Yeah. And then Vegeta had to actually finally be really, truly the good guy. Yeah, that would be a really interesting twist. And then, I mean, I don't know, a Kira Toriyama is so predictably unpredictable. Like, you know it's a Kira Toriyama when you see it, but it's because it's so predictable in that way, but it's unpredictable that he's so clever that that it's a twist or a new idea or something you didn't think of or why does this make sense or... I'd like to see him bring Launch back. Yeah, Launch would be cool. <laughs> launch would be very cool. It's a character um, he just forgot about. Yeah, he apparently he did. He said in the he, he forgot about, about the character. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Sure. Yeah, uh, in regards to Battle of Gods uh, and its and its tonal change from how serious Dragon Ball Z was, uh, you guys kind of got to showcase your comedy timing chops a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, do you guys have any comedic influences like growing up? Oh, like huge! I, I, you know, I know it's te you know it's all controversy right now, but I'm a huge Bill Cosby fan, huge Robin Williams fan, uh, huge Rich Little fan. Um, there, uh, George Carlin, uh, yeah, lots of comedic stuff. In fact, I used to do stand-up comedy uh, when, my, when I was a teenager, like late teen, like 18, 19 years old, and I left because it's an incredibly depressing scene. But um, surprisingly enough, but yeah, I mean, I, I've always excelled at comedy. I tend to, I tend to get comedic parts when I'm not doing Goku. When I was in New York, I got a lot of comedic roles, um, uh, and I really enjoyed. My favorite part of Battle of Gods is I had to carry, I had to do the whole Goku King Kai stuff because I was King Kai. Well, a lot of people don't realize that, and. And I'm not trying to brag, I'm just like, people don't, they like, really? Like, Cynthia Kranz, who plays Chi Chi, the other day, just said, I didn't know you were King Kai this whole time. And I was like, yes! Because um, I, like I like to fool people, because to me, that's part of the job. If you're thinking about me, then you're not thinking about the character. So if I'm making my voice different enough to where you lose yourself in the character, then I'm, I'm doing my job right. And Chris is a very funny person, he's a hardcore prankster. Um, and I think the only part that was difficult about the Vegeta part comedy was the, how hard it was in your voice with the bingo song, but in general, that was very was funny. way easier than I thought. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. When someone, when it was first uh, told to me that Vegeta has a song in Battle of Gods, I was terrified. I was like, because if you've, if you've ever listened to the Japanese voice of Vegeta, his name was Ryo Horikawa, and his, vo his version of Vegeta said, like, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it's a much higher voice than I have. And I thought if he sings, there's no way I'll be able to sing the same song. Oh like, yeah, because it'll be a different key too high. I don't know if you guys remember, but they for Kai, they had a lot of different actors sing the theme song. Uh, and Sean sang one of them, and uh, somebody else sang some of them. I think Justin did, I think Ray you did. Even sang one Didn't of them. you do yours real funny? What'd you do? I did. I, mine's never been released <laughs> because I... Mine's just, Did couldn't. you do like a country singer or something? Yeah, I couldn't take it seriously. Because <laughs> it just wasn't a song that I was capable of singing. It was just too high. It was too high of a song. It's a tenor part. Sing. I'm a lyric baritone, and that's at the top of my range. Oh man, yeah. yeah. It was. It was. I had to sing it like an octave lower. So just saying, it's, uh, I was having to sing it all down here, and it sounded really funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just ended with a hell yeah. Um, and <laughs> never saw the light of day. One of these days, we'll. Hopefully, will you just have it as an extra feature somewhere? Yeah. Do another 
question for me. Yes, sir. Out of the thousands of characters you've played, uh, which ones do you feel more connected to? And what's pretty, pretty, which ones do you feel more connected to? Who you well, I appreciate you thinking that I played thousands of characters. Um, only hundred, not hundred. If I played a hundred, but I played a lot of characters. Um, emotionally, I feel Goku is so synonymous with who I am and what I do that I often forget that I play the character. It's kind of like you know, you wake up and I'm Sean, and I feel as comfortable. You know, living in my Sean world as I wake up, one of my pants, whatever, Sean. And it's no different. Other characters are a stretch for me. Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> wait, how do I feel about what? Wait, wait, sorry, I go put down on you. What? Like, like your personal, <laughs> my personal feelings towards the character. My personal what? Your personal feelings towards the character. Toward the character. Goku, I have a lot of affinity toward Goku because of what he means to people. And it is not, I've said this over and over, it's not the funnest character to play, only because you have to talk like you're on cocaine all the time, and everything's happy, and then you have to scream a lot, and you don't have a lot of emotional depth. I'm jealous of Chris and uh, Eric Vale and uh, Mike McFarland who play more fun characters. I don't um, think Mike McFarland's character is so incredibly deep. Like, it's not deep, but it's funny. Like, Mike McFarland's a master roshi. Roshi and Yajirobe. Um, and I find those characters, they're not deeper, but they're definitely funnier. Um, and so for me, Goku's kind of in a separate little emotional space that is very, very personal to me and very, this is my first audition, it, it, it changed my life, um, so there's a lot emotionally attached to it that's very different than from everything else I played. So, you know, like playing Batman of the Dark Knight Rises, I had to voice match Christian Bale that, uh, for iPad, uh, the cheesy oh. one. Um, so, no, it's a good game, it's a good little game. Um, and you know, that, that's a big character that I wanted to play, by the way. You did the other day? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know the guy we got to sound like Morgan Freeman. Like he like sounds almost exactly. If you get to the Morgan yeah. Freeman, he sounds almost exactly like him. He does, and yeah, he's amazing. Um, and so there's there's a lot of different emotional attachments uh, to different characters depending on what they are. But Goku, I, there's I think the point I'm trying to make is that any emotional attachment I have to Goku, um, the whole rest of my characters I have ever played, I roughly feel the same way. But Goku is completely in a different bubble that's separate from all that and it's it's very uh, special to me so yeah it's hard to compare any character I've played to Vegeta really I mean, I mean every other character I've played has been at most a few months worth of work but Vegeta has been literally 15 years of playing the same guy and you just can't you just can't shake that man like if you it's just it's something you, that cannot be compared to. I, it's looking like I may end up doing this voice for the rest of my life. Like, <laughs> I joked at Comic Con that I'm just going to have a grave and it's, my gravestone's just going to say 9,000 on it. <laughs> <laughs> the arrow pointing down. <laughs> like, I just got a text from Raditz. He says, Goku makes a sandwich, Fox's ADHD theater? What the What are you talking about? What you asked me to look up. Oh, oh, what I asked you to look up. <laughs> <laughs> I am so clueless. I'm surprised this guy and that girl even deal with me. I, I, I'm amazed that I, that I you know, even tie my shoes in the morning because uh, I'm so clueless. Uh, I'm usually deeply lost in thought. I think we answered the question, right? Or are you done? Sorry. Uh, One Piece podcast, your Zoom has um, uh, unzoomed. It's unzoomed, it's now dead. So you're going to have to get this audio from one of your friends. You're going to have to try You're going to have to buy the audio from one of the other news organizations. They're going to charge you. I'll come to that, man. So they try to cock block you. No, you can't have the story. Um, so, what are we doing next? Um,